This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 306. What to do when you screw up, part one, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hello, happy Monday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more. This is just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors. And then on Fridays, I answer your questions right here on the show. Now, today's Monday the 18th, which means for me, the countdown begins to the academic quarter. For those of you that are regular listeners, you know that I'm an assistant professor and chair of a department of nutrition and basic sciences at Bastyr University. Our quarter starts a little bit late. I had a goal to finish reading the ginormous book Hamilton by the start of fall quarter. And I think I'm gonna do it. I've got about 200 pages left. I think I can make it. I mean, how hypocritical of it would be for me to set a goal and then not achieve it. I mean, that's what I talk about on this show all the time. And today's quote, in fact, comes from Alexander Hamilton. As I was reading the book, I found a quote from him where he spoke actually about habit forming. So I quote, Luxuries of every kind lay the strongest hold on the attachments of mankind, which, especially when confirmed by habit, are not easily alienated from them. End quote. Even Alexander Hamilton realized how hard it is to break those habits that we so fondly hold dear, or even those that are quote-unquote luxury habits that maybe we want to get rid of. And of course, when it comes to habit forming, we are going to screw up at some point. So let's hear what Steve has to say about that and start optimizing your life. What to do when you screw up, part one, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. No effing way. I sat on the floor in the bedroom at my buddy's place on Long Island, staring at the spot in my backpack where my laptop was supposed to be, the laptop I needed to run nerd fitness, the laptop that was going to allow me to make a living despite spending nine days up in Massachusetts with my family and friends. At first, I assumed the laptop had to be somewhere in the room. After five minutes of panicked searching, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I left my laptop in the security line in the Nashville airport three days ago. I am screwed. Let's take a look at my screw-up and how the rebellion can learn from it. How could I have been so stupid? At first, I started by calling myself every colorful expletive I could think of. I think at one point, I swore at myself in Russian, and I don't even speak Russian. I started sweating profusely and freaking the hell out. I paced back and forth for 10 minutes, asking myself how I could have been so stupid. I've flown on an airplane with a laptop probably 200 times in the past three years and never once been so dumb. I then thought of the ridiculous number of anomalies in my day at the airport that day that led to my screwing this up so badly. One, I normally get to the airport 90 minutes early. Because I didn't want to miss my workout that morning, I only arrived at the airport 45 minutes early. Two, because I was running late, there was a massive security line. Plus, I was flying southwest, and in the A boarding group, time was of the essence. Three, I was traveling with a container of protein powder in my bag, which then required the TSA agent to pull all of my stuff to the side and stack my bins up, with the laptop in the bottom one. Four, a cute woman sat next to me on the airplane, and we talked the whole time. I didn't open my backpack to use my laptop on the flight, which I normally would have done. Poor me, I know. And five, I was with friends all weekend and never ended up hopping on my computer until Sunday. Had any one of those things been different, I would have either A, had my laptop, or B, noticed it was missing immediately and taken appropriate steps. However, because all of those things went wrong, I essentially threw $1,800 down the toilet and screwed over my teammates at Nerd Fitness who were depending on me to get a lot of work done for a few key projects. Luckily, the story has a happy ending, but not without taking care of business and scaring the daylights out of me. Here's what I did and what you can learn from my mistake. Happens. Take a deep breath. Rather than dwelling on the fact that I was an idiot, which took me a while to do so, I accepted the fact that mistakes happen. Live long enough and you're gonna end up in quote-unquote creepy situations. I put creepy situations in quotes because more often than not, the quote-unquote catastrophes that we think are life-changing 
are in fact minor blips and speed bumps on the road of life, which is a pretty swell road. The fact of the matter is this. The very fact that I am able to have things like a laptop means I'm afforded more opportunities than a vast majority of the planet. There are real problems in the world and real people struggling with really, really horrible things. I quickly forced myself to put my quote-unquote catastrophe into perspective. I realized that all catastrophes are relative and some more life-changing than others. For some, losing a laptop may seem catastrophic, while for others, a car accident without insurance or your house flooding may be what creates panic. Regardless of the situation, no matter how small or large it may seem, we often react the same way. We freak out and blow things way out of proportion. We blame ourselves or the unlikely situation that caused the issue. We wonder what could have been done differently and we dwell on the past. I quickly forced myself to put things into perspective. Doing so snaps you out of the quote, woe is me attitude and instead into the, are you still alive? Do you have your health? Good. There isn't a single thing you can do about what already happened. Shut up and fix it attitude. Want to know another way to keep things in perspective on a regular basis? Volunteer at a homeless shelter or a children's hospital. My time spent calling bingo numbers at the Emory Children's Hospital in Atlanta was a constant reminder of how very lucky I am. So to borrow a quote from my dad, when something goes wrong, tell yourself this as quickly as possible. Quote, if this is the worst thing that ever happens to you, you are going to be okay. End quote. When I found out last year that I had a genetic spinal condition, I had to tell myself the same thing. I woke up, I'm relatively healthy, and I get a chance to live better today than yesterday. I'm a lucky SOB. You might be thinking, Steve, you might have lost a laptop, big whoop. I screwed up and lost my job and my wife. Or, I was in a car accident and I can't afford to buy a new car. Short of death, there's nothing that can't be fixed. I remember a nerd fitness reader who lost everything and then looked at the catastrophe as an opportunity to reevaluate his path and turn his life around. No matter how bad things are, it sure beats the alternative. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled What to Do When You Screw Up by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. I absolutely could relate to Steve sharing his health history. When I was 19, I was diagnosed with a chronic condition and I had to tell myself the same thing. It wasn't immediate. It took me a while. I was pretty depressed about my health condition for a long time. With coaching from my family, with a little bit of perspective, I finally started to tell myself really the same things that Steve mentioned. I wake up, I actually feel good today, and so I'm gonna take advantage of today and try and do the best that I can. It's not easy, I get it. And there are some days when I wake up not feeling well and I look at the past and go, why do I have to have this condition? Why did this happen to me? But when I take a step back, take a deep breath and say, you know what? I'm still way luckier than a lot of people. It really does help. And again, remember you're human. You're gonna have these thoughts. But as often as you can, if you can get that perspective just for a moment, if you can start to smile just a little bit, I guarantee you'll start to feel better. Now, before I go, I wanted to remind you that we have four other podcasts where we narrate blogs for you and we cover a bunch of different topics. To subscribe to those, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show. Thank you as always for doing that. Thank you for being here every day. I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. I'm gonna go read some more out of my Alexander Hamilton book and I'll see you back here tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift 
as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.